These are brand new images from the Euclid Space Telescope, alongside gorgeous deep field images of space that each contain millions of galaxies. We have a menagerie of strong gravitational lenses, including some special edge-on lenses and even some double lenses. We have an entire zoo of galaxies coming in all shapes, sizes, and orientations, and a pretty special image of an object called the Cat's Eye Nebula. In this video, we'll take a look at exactly what we can see in each of these images and pick out as many highlights as possible, talk about the science behind the images, why these ones were taken, and get excited about what all of this means for the future of Euclid and astronomy as a whole. The Euclid Space Telescope is a galaxy mapping machine designed to image billions of galaxies over its six-year mission. Launched in July 2023, the telescope is only a small fraction of the way through its mission, but the first data being released now is already incredible. On the 19th of March 2025, Euclid released the first batch of survey data, marking the beginning of this quest to create the largest 3D map of galaxies ever. This data and the images released alongside it are known as Q1, or the first quick release from Euclid. This is a snapshot of the data, images, and science that the telescope is capable of, all ahead of larger data releases, the first of which will follow in 2026. This map here shows the whole sky, and marked in yellow are the three deep fields of Euclid. Over the course of the mission, the telescope will image these specific patches dozens of times, and combining all of those images and data together will produce incredibly deep views of the universe, revealing faint galaxies that are incredibly distant and dim. For now, we have images of each of the deep fields with just one visit, which is roughly an hour spent with each pointing of the telescope. Let's start up here and have a good look at the Euclid Deep Field North. Keep an eye out for a famous object that we'll also zoom in on later as well. Here, hundreds of thousands of galaxies take center stage, showing off a variety of different sizes, shapes, and colors. There's also loads of stars that are in our own galaxy appearing in this image too. This deep field is relatively close to the plane that our Milky Way galaxy sits in, so we get loads of stars getting in the way of this deep field image. You can easily pick out those stars, as they're the super bright points of light that have all these spikes around them. These are called diffraction spikes, and they're caused by the very bright light of the stars interacting with the shape of the mirror and the struts, or arms, that hold up Euclid's secondary mirror. I have a whole other video talking about diffraction spikes in JWST images and what causes them exactly, and it's very similar here if you'd like to take a look at that one. The faint blue light across the image in some places is dust in between the stars, also just kind of getting in the way for this picture. After just this one observation from Euclid, we've already seen more than 10 million galaxies in this one patch alone. Feel free to try and count them all if you fancy it. But just imagine how much more we'll see once Euclid has made the planned 32 visits to this field. It's going to be amazing. On the right-hand side of the center of the image is a large group of galaxies, dominated by a notable one called NGC 6505. This galaxy actually hosts the first ever Einstein ring that Euclid spotted, and it is 590 million light years away. This one and an image of it were actually announced a short while ago, and I have a video dedicated entirely to that image and the science behind it. So check it out if you want to hear all about the amazing science hiding in that one galaxy. To the center left of the image, we have the famous object that I hinted at earlier. It's around 300 light years away, so much closer than the galaxy we just mentioned. And in fact, the cat's eye is in the Milky Way galaxy. Also known as NGC 6543, this is an incredible fossil record of the evolution of a dying star shedding its colorful outer shells. I love this image and the colors it shows off. It's a much wider shot than I'm used to seeing for the cat's eye. For example, this one from the Hubble Space Telescope. This kind of brings me on to one of the huge powers of Euclid. It has a much, much wider field of view than other telescopes like Hubble or JWST, meaning it can survey large portions of the sky in record time and take beautiful images like this. The three patches shown off here in the images took just a week to collect the data for, and in total, Euclid has spotted 26 million galaxies here, the furthest of which is 10.5 billion light years away. As we move to the second patch, the Euclid Deep Field South, 
try to notice how the galaxies do appear to be slightly organized into a large-scale cosmic web. It might look like they are at first, but the positions of the galaxies aren't completely random. Instead, some structure can be seen on the largest scales, thanks to the gravitational interactions between galaxies. In addition to the treasure trove of galaxies we're seeing, there are also active galactic nuclei, AGN, visible in these images. These are supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies, surrounded by massive disks of matter that are falling onto the black hole and shining brighter than the entire galaxies they live within. One highlight for me in the Euclid Deep Field South are the clusters of galaxies we can see. These are incredibly massive groups of galaxies, and they have an amazing effect on the background objects that are even more distant behind them. This is an example of something called strong gravitational lensing, just like we saw in NGC 6505. It's where the gravity of the cluster warps, distorts, and magnifies light coming from those more distant galaxies. This means that we don't see the background objects as they really look, as spiral or elliptical galaxies, but rather we see them stretched and warped into arcs or even complete rings called Einstein rings. They're called that because Einstein was the first person to suggest they could occur. Something cool is that it's not just clusters of galaxies that can do this though. We can actually find strong gravitational lenses around single galaxies if another galaxy lines up just right behind it and the masses are high enough. Here is an amazing montage of just some of the strong gravitational lenses that Euclid has found in these three patches. It is almost impossible to overstate how impressive this is. In just this data, Euclid has found more than 500 gravitational lens candidates. In all of astronomy before Euclid, fewer than 1,000 strong lenses have been confirmed, and in just a week's worth of data, Euclid has found another 500 candidates. That is incredible. There's also a huge variety in the population here too. Here, I'll show you some images from the science paper that came out with this, just to tease the fact that there are even more images in those papers that have been included in the press release. Take a look at this pretty perfect ring, one galaxy being warped to perfectly encircle another. This snail-like lens is also pretty cool looking, but probably the highlights though are the so-called double source plane lenses. In these cases, it's not one galaxy behind another being lensed. It is that, plus a third galaxy even further away also being lensed. This gives double arcs at different distances from the center. They're rare, they're beautiful, and scientifically, they are incredibly useful. I also really like it when the closer galaxy, the one doing the lensing, is edge-on. It gives the whole thing a totally different look and feel, and I think it's really cool. As ever, let me know your favorite one of these in the comments below. Here is also a quick comparison between Euclid on the top and telescopes on the ground, which were the best images of these lenses we had until Euclid, and I think the improvement is pretty obvious and pretty impressive. It's amazing what sending your telescope to space can do for you. In fact, Euclid is imaging such a large patch of space all the time that we can't search for and classify these lenses or galaxies by hand all the time. It would just take too long, even for professional astronomers. Instead, Euclid is now using AI searches for lenses, trained on examples found by citizen science classifiers on the Zooniverse platform, and complemented by other by-eye checks when required. By the time the first major cosmology release for Euclid happens in October 2026, Euclid expects to have found over 7,000 lenses, and by the end of the mission, we'll see 100,000 of them, marking a revolution in the field of strong lensing. Good job, Euclid. These AI models and citizen science efforts are also being used to classify galaxies as well as strong lenses. In a one-month campaign in 2024, 9,976 human volunteers looked at Euclid images fresh from the telescope before they'd been released and helped to teach an AI model called Zubot to recognize galactic features in Euclid images. And over 380,000 galaxies have now been catalogued in details using this method. I'll leave links in the description of this video if you want to get involved in projects like this when they go live online. In this montage, we can see a selection of the beautiful galaxies imaged by Euclid in those three deep field patches. They range from stunning spirals, both face-on and edge-on, to pairs of galaxies, some of which are interacting and some of which aren't, and many of them are being photobombed by those same bright stars in the Milky Way with spikes on them that we talked about earlier. 
Take a look through this awesome selection, and be sure to let me know which one you think is the most beautiful or interesting. I don't think many of these have names yet though, so feel free to also suggest names for these galaxies in the comments, or find some other interesting way of describing which ones you like. For me, I think I'll buck my trend of always picking spiral galaxies as the most beautiful, and instead go for an interacting pair here. Maybe this one or this one as my favourites right now. Let's now make our way to the third and final deep field of Euclid. We've already used up north and south for names, and this one is instead called the Euclid Deep Field Fornax. This one is named after the constellation it sits in, called Fornax or the Furnace. Now, it may feel like we're exploring a lot of space with these images, and in some sense, we really are. These first glimpses are 63 square degrees of sky. That's about 300 times the size of the full moon. But on the other hand, Euclid's final map will cover 14,000 square degrees. So in fact, so far we've only seen 0.45% of the galaxies that the final map will contain by the end of Euclid's mission. This is at least 10 times more galaxies than we'll ever have detailed measurements of before, and will help us start to answer questions like how supermassive black holes grow, how spiral arms in galaxies form and evolve, how the environments around galaxies govern their evolution and morphology, and even test our ideas of what dark matter and dark energy are, although our knowledge of that is pretty limited at the moment. Alongside these images, a massive 34 science papers have been released, doing all sorts of cool work. I can't go through all of them here, mostly because I haven't read them all yet. But if you have any more questions about any of the images or any of the science already being done with Euclid, let me know and I'll answer as many as I can in the comments. Also, a special shout out to the Q1 papers that were led by people at the University of Portsmouth, where I also work. Good job, everyone. Euclid's full power won't be unlocked until we have the full map and dataset from its six-year mission, including the dozens of trips to the deep field that will be truly incredible to see when finished. It will change how we understand parts of the universe, unlock a new tool to do cosmology, and hopefully teach us about the mysterious components of the universe that we don't yet understand. By then, we'll have imaged 1.5 billion galaxies, received 100 gigabytes of data every day from Euclid, and hopefully be a little bit wiser about the universe. In the meantime, you can find the full resolution images with the links in the description. They are really worth exploring on your own, on as good a screen as you possibly can. And they're also on the ESA Sky website map to explore if you don't want to download the big files yourself. Enjoy. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!